Okay, so here's Brain Drain 2, one of my very first mandel bulbs that I've created in Mandelbulb 3D version 1.91. And uh, I just wanted to quickly discuss what one of the new modules that Andreas Maschke has added to the mix of cool stuff in here, and that would be the B tracer. The bulb tracer is basically a really cool way of getting solid meshes out of uh, Mandelbulb instead of having to mess with voxel stacks. So this uh, basically is a representation of what I have here. So I basically brought it in, imported parameter from the main. I messed around with X offset, Y offset and Z offset and scales and stuff here till I got as much as possible of this in here. I actually did cock up a little bit on this uh, and went ahead and waited for an hour or two uh, or whatever it took me to render the mesh out at 400 uh, volumetric resolution, which means uh, basically how dense the mesh is. Uh, you can also decide whether you're doing the inside, outside, or both uh, when it comes to the rendering. Uh, the, you know, if you use both, you'll probably have a fairly um, time intensive uh, thing going on. Anyway, all of these things, like s oversampling and so on, adds to the time it'll take to produce the actual uh, end result. A bit of smoothing here, I just didn't touch this. Uh, the default is, is basically giving you a certain amount of smoothing, which basically takes care of any rough bits and so on. Now, calculating the preview will just basically do this. This is happening automatically. And this is basically also the uh, amount of different samples that we're uh, creating here, or slices, if you want, of the actual model that we have uh, inside of the Mandelbulb 3D. OpenGL, once you switch that on, throws this thing out, which is basically a preview, which stays blank all the way till the mesh has been generated. And that could be a bit confusing if you look at that and sort of say, what? I can't see anything here. Well, all you have to do is have a bit of patience, create your output file, uh, give it a name, in other words, and you can type that straight in here if you want, or you can go in here and click. And then you basically be pick up what you want to do uh, with it uh, when you render. You can either just do it as a preview or you can do a final mesh or a raw and final mesh. A raw would be the one that isn't smoothed as well as the final one. So you can have two meshes created in one sweep, which is cool. Anyway, 4,482 seconds is what it took me to get this. We can work out what that is in minutes later on. Anyway, so once you have the preview uh, or the mesh rendered, then you can do stuff like this in here with the mouse, uh, right click to drag it around. As you can see w uh, what I mentioned earlier, uh, this uh, has a hole in it. So we can see the inside of it, which is fine uh, in this case. I just need to place it on a plane somewhere in the 3D graphics package. This is the back of it. We can't move the light that way. So uh, we'll just, uh, well, we could here, but we'll just, uh, just leave it as is here. This is just a very quick preview. I have a couple of holes there, but um, that's fine, we'll live with that. Pretty cool little thing, and when we look at what we started off with, it's pretty true to um, the actual original here, so. Cool mesh, very good, worth the time to render out. Okay, so I decided to make a simpler mesh, um, just to kind of play around with it a little bit. So, what I did was I set the size, the number of slices or kind of elements in here, to uh, 32 cubed and the volumetric resolution to only 150 so that means we have fewer slices it'll be much quicker and so I did that and this is what I got it's a bit rough around the edges but it's got a lot less vertices and faces I wanted to have a simple one to play with anyway so just to kind of give you an idea again, just to kind of show you here, uh, you can output your final mesh, your raw and final, or don't save it all and just do a preview. So what I was going to do now is just kind of show you here with only the preview. This is what you kind of need to do before you get started on the actual mesh generation. And that is you need to scale things down so that you fit the whole mesh inside. Now if we go back a bit you can see here what would happen and this is the important part that you know it gives you kind of a rough estimate of anything that's going to be flattened or whatever in this case 
pretty much all sides are going to be flattened so it's obviously not fitting within this kind of virtual space here so we're just going to take the overall scale down as you can see we, we sort of at this size here we still had some flatness here that means that would be a hole or whatever so we went all the way down to uh, an extra click or whatever to about 46 percent anyway we can do it like that um, we can just kind of just to show you uh, if we do this kind of roughly we can kind of just do a quick one and not save it so let's say I go for like 50 here and generate the mesh this will be quick and as you can see now we got sort of a very brain looking kind of thing which is kind of cool but uh, it's not very good looking so we can if we increase that to 64 you'll see kind of by just changing the values you can kind of see how it's worked out now if I generate that one we're kind of seeing it's still kind of a lumpy thing right so what we'll do is we just pump this up a bit and then we get what I just had there before so I'm not going to go any further with that but I just wanted to show you that you can experiment with the lower values first till you get things right you get the whole actual model the whole mesh actually to fit inside the preview so once you have that set up you can kind of then pump up your numbers here I didn't even use any oversampling or anything this time anyway um, onwards and upwards the next module that is brand new as well since the latest version is the mutagen and I'm afraid most mandel bulb 3d uh, enthusiasts around the world might have missed this or didn't quite get the point of it and it's an absolute uh, gift from Andreas to anybody who's coming in fresh and anybody who's sitting there not sure what to do with regards of all the formulas and things we have like so many millions of combinations we can throw together and half of them won't work and you know by the time you figure out what to actually mix together here to get some cool interesting stuff here you'll probably be growing a long grey beard not so good if you're a lady of course but either way it's something that for a newbie uh, like myself it's a pain in the ass pardon the French so what we'll do here is I'll just go through that I'm gonna just close the mesh preview and show you how I got this nice little mandel bulb going so I open up the mutagen and what I did here originally I started from the very uh, early first mandel bulb that sits there by default so that's how I got this in five different generations that I created each time you can select what so basically we start off with what we have in the editor that's this one here start then we mutate from that before we mutate we can decide what we want to do in the mutations so here we basically with these sliders there's no f specific numbers but what we do is we specify for each mutation how likely we are to uh, actually exchange add or remove formulas these things in here so uh, basically all of these things the formula stacks are basically stuff that we organize or modify with this button or this slider so the more we put here the further to the right we drag it the more chance we have of things changing in here then we have the parameters or the params of the formula so in other words this particular uh, formula set here is Benesi 1 Pow 2 uh, using BP uh, only and I can't pronounce this I have no clue IQ uh, norm bulb and in uh, 4 there's nothing interesting enough in uh, formula 5 we have a mistletoe symmetric and 6 is empty so we can see these are the four formulas currently used so guess what all we have to do is specify if we want to change those parameters the probability of it is in this line here this is like two columns the strength is how much power of it 
how, how, how powerful are we changing these things? Are we changing them a little bit, the parameters in this case, or are we changing them lots? Or we can go somewhere in the middle. Are we going to change the Julia mode? Well, that's kind of, if you don't know about what the Julia set is and what the differences are in here, when we have Julia on, which at the moment we have, or when we have Julia off, then yeah, you can probably find out on the interwebs uh, exactly what's going on there with Julia. Anyway, we can decide not to change the Julia mode. I like it the way it is for now. And we can then drag that to the left. So we're basically saying we're not interested in this part. Change iteration count, that's basically how, how, how much, how deep the calculations go and how much detail we're getting and so on. We can also disable them all, or in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just hit mutate. And straight away, you can see different mutations starting off from this being generated. This might take, depending on the computer power you have under the hood, it might take a while or it could be fairly quick. All right, so this is all looking pretty similar. There's a couple of different ones here. I like this one where we're separating the hemispheres of this brain a little bit. This is kind of an interesting one, which has possibly some potential. So uh, if you look up here, you can say uh, double click on image or click on mutate button to mu mutate. Right click for menu. Uh, so right click here and send to main editor. Calculate 3D. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit. And I can also, of course, if you, when you're messing with things, you might be better off just kind of um, changing these things down to smaller, lower values. And put aspect of 640 by 360. Stop and restart. And half size. Or full size. So it then does a quick render of that. So the first thing is, do we like it? Don't we like it? Yeah, I think it's got potential all right. And then all you have to do is switch this to save. The save pane, basically, this is how these work. You have open, save, save, pick, tools, preferences, all of these things as you click on them, makes new things appear here. So I'm gonna save this as not just an MP3, which is the pure raw, parameters which is the easiest and lightest insofar as space this one saves everything images and all kinds of things so that takes up a lot of space now this one is the the one I tend to use because it simply uh, puts in um, a little preview JPEG as well so I can just leave the mutagen name uh, for now you can once you've started tweaking stuff you can basically name it any way you like um, you can also put it to clipboard so you can paste it into a group like uh, the maniacs if you want to share your parameters. Anyway, uh, so that was one of the uh, mutations. Uh, let's see if there's anything else interesting here. Eh, this one might be. Send it to the editor. Calculate. And if you want, you don't even have to calculate stuff. You can just save it out straight as MP M3P and then come back in and open them up afterwards. It's up to you how you run this. This one looks interesting too, so uh, I think I might just um, let, uh, let that one go on. I'll pause. All right, so we're coming to the end here for this one. Just made it uh, full size, a uh, one-to-one. Um, there we go. Yeah, it has potential, so we'll save that one too with parameters and preview image that way you have a thumbnail so you know which especially if you're saving everything with silly names like um, you know the actual mutation uh, IDs now I'm gonna take one more out of here and then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to continue after that in this case I think what I'll do is I'll just stop that and save it out as pure parameters and there we go I'll work it out later at some point Okay, now, back to the mutations. Right, so anything I'm interested in here to explore further, I just double click on it. It becomes the new mutation master and starts a new group of muta mutations. And down here, as you can see, generation three of three, you can step back through them. 
So anything, you know, like this, as long as you keep Mandelbulb uh, 3D running, you can keep on going back and forth between the generations that you've pr produced. So this, my friends, is how very, very quickly you can discover how chaos, which is at work here, can bring you all sorts of new and wonderful puzzles to play with. Uh, you know, all of these things may be a bit rough, and then after uh, you've created something, of course, the next step would be to, um, uh, you know, check out what kind of potential you have, go in and uh, basically uh, work with all the different parameters and so on, bring it into the navigator and see in a faster way of working on things while this is going on in the background. You can go in and adjust everything here and uh, you can of course zoom in you can click in here and move it right click to change things like this change the navi mode um, and all of these things you can also do by um, using the shortcuts on the keyboard like W for zooming in, get closer, and as you can see this looks really awful, of course it does, because what we do here is we have a progressive preview, that means we can actually fast get an idea of where we want to be, and then when we have approximately the place we want to be, we then let it go for a bit so we get better a better idea and uh, of where we are in, in respect of the actual overall thing. Uh, you can rotate things, you can zoom, and you can change the quality. And when you start doing that, you can do things like change the lightness. Some of these things work kind of opposite of what you intuitively think. So um, play around with it and you'll figure out things. By the way, this gives you a kind of an idea of where we're pointing insofar as in 3D space. Are we looking towards the light or are we behind and so on? This is kind of something that you'll figure out when you start playing with it. The steps, this is important. When you get close to where you want to be, you might want to want to take down the, the step so that each time here the, you slide uh, or you walk. Okay, there you go. As you probably have guessed, Andreas is German and he has put in these things in German or uh, Jesse might be German too, I'm not 100% sure. Sorry Jesse, I'm not 100% sure there. Uh, anyway, so yes, it basically tells me that that value didn't work. So let's try with two without the, the decimal point. And now it works, right? We can rotate it a bit. As you see, I'm ro rolling to the left but to me it's kind of like it's rolling to the right so yes just you get used to that kind of stuff but it's basically uh, simply uh, and I'm moving up instead of down so it's like you kind of have to get used to some of those things anyway so once you have a kind of an interesting setup here I'm gonna save this out Once you have an interesting setup in your navigator, you can just paste it onto the main view, view editor. But in order to do that, I'll have to stop the stuff that's going on in there first. So now I calculate, and if I do this, bring it down a bit. It actually takes the same amount of time whether you anti alias or not. But we might just do a very quick one and say f 480 here and use 16 by 9. Stop it. And then do a quick preview. Anyway, apart from that, like there's an awful lot more to it, of course, than that. But uh, that's how you use the mutation in the mutagen.